Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode in the video series where we will be putting together the Phoenix Model 20cc0. In this episode, we're going to be handling everything in the wings, so that means the ailerons, flaps, and retracts. So before we get started, let's head back down to Dayton where we check out the real Model 21 A6M2 that's at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Take a look at its wings, its ailerons, flaps, and landing gear, and then we'll head over to the bench and we'll get to work. I really wanted you guys to check out the folding wing tips on the Model 21. This was done because originally the plane didn't fit on standard deck elevators on aircraft carriers, so they got some extra space by folding in the wing tips a little bit. But I wanted to show you some nice pictures of the wings, the flaps, the ailerons, the landing gear, the struts, the gear doors on the real Model 21 down in Dayton. All right, here is everything for the flaps. We're gonna start off with the high-tech D645MWs, one of my favorite general all-around servos. But now we have the ball links, those little push rods, all the screws, and the control horns for the flaps. And we'll get those mounted and show you how those are mounted through the rear of the wing. So here's the view from the back and the flap servo mounts in at an angle in the pocket and the push rod comes through the rear of the wing into the flap area. And you see, I haven't connected the control horn yet. It's just laying there, but I just wanted to get this shot to show you where that push rod goes. And here's from the other end so you can see clearly. Really neat how they did this, totally recessed. You don't see any of this and you do get pretty good articulation. When I epoxied the pin hinges, I found these little extra spacers from tackle boxes that I used to make sure while the epoxy was drying, I had the flap nice and centered and there was a little bit of a gap on each side uh, as the glue was drying and it worked out great. And here is the flap working. We have it hooked up to the high-tech HFP30 servo tester and doing a slow sweep through the full range of motion. So this is what it's gonna look like. No push rod out in the open. You don't even see the servo and it works nice and clean. All right, next up are the ailerons. Again, we're gonna start with the high-tech D645MW servos. We're gonna have the control horns, the push rods, the ball links, my little yellow servo washers there. And the cool thing right in the center is a 3D printed servo pocket. And normally that's a piece of plywood, light ply with some pieces of wood. Sometimes you gotta glue on, but here it's nice to see some 3D printed parts getting their way to these ARFs. So here is the aileron pocket. I'm not gonna go through and show you step by step. In fact, I'm gonna link to some videos up in the corner right here on previous models where I'll go through exactly how to do the pin hinges and how to mount the servo. This is nothing um, out of the ordinary, pretty straightforward to mount this servo, mount the control horn. So check those out. But here we have the servo working, again, hooked up to the servo tester, just going through, sweeping through the cycle showing you the articulation of the ailerons. All right, next up are the retracts and the wheel wells and the wing tips. And there's a lot in this picture here, but we have the wheel wells. We'll get to know those wheel wells real well. Cut those out and you can see one is cut and one is not cut. We have the retracts, the wheels, we have the control unit, we have the nav light covers, we have the gear doors. Let's get all this stuff put in here. So even in the back, you can see I've already cut the covering to place the wheel well, but so you'll just use some Lexan scissors to cut that out. The control unit, you are going to have to solder on some power and the 16 gauge wire it came with was really thin. So I had some leftover Fromco 16 gauge wire that I went ahead and soldered up and wanted to show you that right here. 
Another thing to check out, these are my retracts, and, and you'll never notice this unless you're looking at them next to each other, but the one on the left, you can see the axle is kind of inserted at a funny angle, and I don't know if the tap was actually off, but the one on the right seems good. I'm gonna leave it this way, because I think we'll be fine. That This doesn't affect the alignment, um, but we'll keep an eye on it. I wanted to show a close-up of the landing gear plate where the landing gear are connected and you can see it's just a half inch of this sandwiched plywood and carbon fiber. There's a lot of glue there. In fact, you see a lot of glue coming out from in between. So really nice sturdy place to mount the landing gear. So here's the landing gear all hooked up. Let's retract it and show you what this looks like. You will again cut out the wheel well and epoxy it or glue it in there and take your time and you can see I probably could have taken a little bit more time gluing it down. Um, this is up to you how exact you want, how neat and clean you want these wheel wells to look. This is what it ended up on mine and we'll go ahead and, and lift her out and show it to you with the wheel out. You can see there's a hole there you need to cut for the power wire at the end of the actuator pretty straightforward. These are the retracts, the real wells after they've been glued. One thing you'll notice on how the landing gear are mounted, I replaced the Phillips head wood screws that are supplied to mount the landing gear with socket head cap screws. Just a little bit easier when you're torquing these things down. Here's a nice shot of both going up and retracting together. Now this is maybe a little downside about this control unit is that there's no way to do a delay, like one gear starting slightly before the other. They both go up and down in unison, just as you've seen. So for the nav lights, I went ahead and got some clear red and clear green Tamiya model paints and painted the inside of the nav light covers. I still need to trim them up, but I'm waiting on from some LEDs to come in, so I'm not gonna glue those in quite yet. So here she is with the wing on, up on her gear for the very first time. Just wanted to take a minute and show you some progress pics. This is where we are right now. There's a close up of the landing gear and the fuel tank. We've got the wing done. We did the ailerons, the flaps, and the retracts. Next up is everything in the tail, the elevator, the rudder, the horizontal and vertical stab, and getting all those servos and connections mounted. So we will see you next time, and thanks for tuning in.